about my no heat challenge that I told you about in one of my previous videos. I cannot believe that it has been six months already since I started this challenge and I'm just going to be showing you tons and tons of pictures and maybe some video footage of all the things that I've learned, all the things that I've tried out and all my experiences. So it's going to be a long one but please stay towards the end and please watch it towards the end and maybe share it because I'm sure that you or somebody else out there is going to be able to learn something from this video and from all that I've gone through. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel as yet, I have tons and tons of videos that I plan to put up here. So please subscribe and please share your support. And yeah, like this video as well. Give it a thumbs up if you got something from it. Oh, and I also have to tell you guys about my new Facebook page. It's for everybody who is natural or who supports being natural and just embracing your curls. Um, it's new and I'm still putting um, information up there, but please go there because I'm going to put a link in the bottom of this video in the description box so you guys can check it out and let me know what you think and show your support. Okay guys, so I just need to clarify that during this um, challenge, I did not use any flat irons on my hair because that was the whole purpose of me going on this challenge is to eliminate flat irons from my regimen, but I did use a blow dryer twice. So just to let you guys know um, what I did. And I really feel like I didn't cheat or anything like that because my intent, like I said, wasn't to cut out heat completely but to limit heat and as well as completely remove flat irons from my regimen. Okay, so let's recap. In August of last year, I did my last major chop on my hair. Um, I did a chop because I had relaxed my edges. Moment of silence for that. I relaxed my edges, okay, because I was using strictly wigs to grow my hair and so in order to blend with my wigs I did a very foolish thing and I relaxed my edges. I'm not saying that if you choose to relax your edges that is bad but for me I when I did my froze and my blowouts, my twist outs etc my hair was just looking a hot mess because the front was all straight and the back was very curly so <laughs> um, yeah I regret relaxing my edges but I did that and so because of the two textures in my hair I decided to cut off most of my relaxed edges and when I did that the front of my hair around my edges that area was three inches long and the back was around seven and a half to eight inches because I didn't cut off much at the back. So that is what I was working with. So let's fast forward to February of this year um, was the last time that I flat ironed my hair. And I had great results. I was feeling it. My hair was really straight and it looked great. But then when I um, washed my hair, I didn't know what was going on. My hair felt different. It looked different. And I was scared that I got heat damage because I had used a heat protectant. I had only done like two passes in each section. I had done very small sections. So I didn't understand why I could possibly have heat damage, but I felt that I did. So I decided at that point in time, hey, I'm just going to cut out flat irons for my regimen. I'm not going to use flat irons for a whole year. And that's why I started my no heat challenge. Okay, so March of this year was the beginning of the no heat challenge for me. I actually started at the end of February. So March was the first month. And um, I was doing everything that I was usually doing. I was co-washing weekly, I was deep conditioning, I was sealing all that moisture in with oils, um, and I was being gentle with my hair. Now, moving on to April, I was still seeing like some straight 
um, sections in my hair. It wasn't whole sections, but it was like for instance my ends and um, I also had some straight edges still from when I had cut it off because I hadn't cut out everything and so it was growing out. So I did a trim. It wasn't anything major, but I trimmed a couple inches off um, of my hair in April. But I was still co-washing, I was still deep conditioning. Okay, so May was a really exciting month for me in the sense that I started using more uh, natural products. Um, so I started using baking soda to cleanse my scalp and following up with um, white vinegar. And I know a lot of people use apple cider vinegar, but I just use white vinegar because that's what I had at the time and it worked really well. My hair was really soft, really manageable and um, yeah, so I made that. A regular thing in my regimen. I also started using shea butter and at first <laughs> I did not like the smell it just turned me off and I was wondering why I bought shea butter in the first place but and I also have a video on this so I'll link it so you guys can see my first impression but that drastically changed when I experimented and just keep kept trying with the shea butter um, mixing in oils mixing um, honey and coconut oil. Um, I made my first shea butter mix and I absolutely loved it and I also have a video on the many ways that I use shea butter so I will link that as well but it was an amazing experience I really liked it and um, yeah I love shea butter now. So June was a long month and in June I did so much so I would have normally moisturized my hair with water daily. Um, I'd always done that. But I started using essential oils and I started adding them to my daily moisturizer, which was water. And um, I started adding a bit of lavender oil and, and a bit of tea tree oil to my daily moisturizer. And I realized that my hair um, stayed moisturized for longer periods of time and so I added that um, to my regimen and I still do it today. In June I also did a ton of low manipulation styles and I'd always done low manipulation styles but in June I realized that my hair was tangling, it was a mess, um, I could not do wash and goes <laughs> and I could not leave my hair out in like my high puff which was my like my signature thing for very long and so I started doing more flexi rod sets, um, more twist outs and as well as protective styling like my twists. I always um, kept my hair in twists. Another big thing that happened in June was the fact that I started doing water only washing. Yes. And that was something else. Um, at first I thought how can you wash your hair with only water? But I realized that my hair really benefited from not having all these products on it, not constantly being weighed down by too much product. I realized that my hair really loved just water. Of course it needed more than water. I was still cleansing my scalp um, because even though I was washing my hair with water, my scalp still needed to be cleansed of all that dust and exposure to the elements and all of that stuff that just sticks to your scalp. So um, my regimen was I would do my baking soda rinse, spritz some vinegar on there, the usual thing, and then three days after that I would wash with water only. And that is massage my scalp, then get under the warm water, let that run all through my scalp, and make sure that my hair is in twists to reduce friction and just to reduce tangles. Then once I'm done with that, scratching my scalp, loosening up the sebum, drag that down on the strands of my hair and then seal all of that with cold water. And twist my hair up for the week. Now the theory behind massaging your scalp is that um, with all the heat that is being generated, on your scalp from that um, 
that movement and that stimulation it's gonna help your follicles to not produce more hair but it's gonna stimulate your follicles and your hair is just gonna benefit and there's gonna be more growth okay so July of this year I detangled my hair with a comb for the first time in like like two three months okay I had not used a comb I was strictly um, finger detangling and that worked really well, especially with my shea butter. I did see a lot of the tangles melt away and it wasn't as tangled, but it didn't get all the tangles out. And I really needed to use a comb because I was still getting tangles and I was still getting a lot of single strand knots. And I don't know why that is. Maybe my hair is just prone to that because I was keeping my hair in protective styling and I was using low manipulation. But anyway, I needed to use a comb so I realized that in order to keep my hair free of tangles, as much tangles as possible, I needed to use a comb. In July, I also used heat for the first time. Now, I feel like I still stuck to um, the challenge because I did not use flat irons but I did use a blow dryer on a very cool setting. It was literally like sitting in front of a fan and letting it just blow on you and my hair did not suffer, my hair was not dry, I made sure that I um, moisturized, I didn't use um, any excessive heat. And so my hair continued to flourish and the reason why I had blow dried is because after I detangled my hair I wanted my hair to be very stretched and easy to twist or style and just keep free of the knots I also switched my method of moisturizing my hair now I've mentioned before that I always use the LOC method which means that you use a liquid then an oil and then a cream to moisturize your hair um so I used water then an oil of my choice whether it was olive oil or whether it was coconut oil or whether it was nutmeg oil and then I'd use a cream like shea butter um, that worked really well but um, I decided to experiment and switch it up because I like to experiment so I started using the LCO method which basically means that you still use water first but you use your shea butter or your or your cream or whatever else um, after the water and then you seal with an oil and it may seem like a really small change but it really helps to keep my hair moisturized for longer periods of time and I had less to do so we come to August of this year and in August, I decided to try um, African Black Soap to cleanse my scalp. I saw a bunch of videos and then I went into the store and I saw it and I said, let me just try it and see how it works just to switch my regimen up a bit and see if my hair would respond like I saw in the video with the other YouTubers. And let me tell you, I am officially in love with African black soap and I will have a separate video if you guys want to see how I wash my hair with African black soap. I had just done a Bantu knot out on my hair and I used flaxseed gel which I had made like the week before for the first time and I had residue in my hair from that because I was a bit too heavy handed when applying the flaxseed gel so I did have residue in my hair and when I used the African black soap my hair was just so clean and soft and moisturized and yeah like I said I am in love and I endorse this product 100% and this twist out that I have is actually um, about three or four days old and this is after I washed my hair with just African black soap. I did not use any gel or anything to get my hair to be like this. It's just strictly soap. I also changed my recipe for shea, my shea butter mix which I used to condition my hair and moisturize my hair. So I mixed 
um, shea butter, coconut oil, honey, and the newest ingredient to my shea butter mix was um, rosemary tea, which made the mix um, a lot more um, watery and not as thick, um, not like a butter. But I saw this recipe from 22nd Century Natural Woman. And I absolutely love her channel. She has beautiful long hair and I've been watching her for a while. So I decided to, to try her recipe out a bit. I did tweak a bit of her recipe, but just um, I made it to my liking and I absolutely love it. Okay guys, so here are some of the things that I've learned um, during this journey from beginning um, up to my six month mark. One of the things I've learned is that my hair does not like flat irons. Even when I use two passes, even when I use heat protectant, even when I am sure not to use too much of a high heat setting, my hair is still prone to getting heat damage. So I don't know if going forward I will ever use a flat iron again. Um, I don't want to say that I won't because I probably will. But I'm just going to be really, really careful and um, really skeptical and hesitant to use flat irons anytime in the future. Another thing is that my hair seems to really like simplicity and low manipulation. I mean, I've always known that low manipulation is really good for my hair, but I've realized now, especially um, during this um, challenge, that my hair just responds really well to... Um, being left alone so I'm going to be doing that much more in the future. Another thing I've learned is that using all natural products or incorporating as much natural products in my hair regimen as possible is really really great for my hair because my hair seems to respond well. I mean at first I was skeptical about using shea butter and baking soda and all of these things that you can find around your house to Put in my hair but my hair seems to love it so I'm gonna continue using as much natural products as I can because my hair is thriving because of it and also when you make your own mixes and you make your own products you're basically um, controlling what you put in there and so you know exactly what's going on your scalp another thing that I've learned is that African black soap is just amazing for my hair. It's the one thing in this whole um, journey and this whole process that I don't regret using at all. I mean, of course, I loved all of the, most of the things that I've tried on my hair, but this is the one thing that has really made a drastic change. Finally, I've learned that I shouldn't be afraid to experiment and try new things in my hair as long as I know that I'm not hurting my hair and being really careful with what I put on my scalp. So that's it for the update video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed. Happy, healthy hair journey to everyone. And don't forget to subscribe, like my Facebook page, and all that good stuff. See you soon. Bye.